guys, Rossen from TPC here, and today we have Imri from Tactical Rifleman and Prime Combat Training with us. Now, Imri adores dogs, he loves scrapes, he likes to hurt people, he also likes to jump from planes without a reason, but uh, his favorite is to ask Chuck Liddell to kick him full force on the leg. <laughs> Multiple times. So, Imri, uh, can you say something about your background for all the TPC followers? Sure. Well, so my background shooting wise is military, right? I served in special operations in the Israeli military and uh, I've done some. Uh, I've done some contracting as well uh, afterwards, which is ironically enough in a roundabout way how you and I know each other. And uh, and uh, in the last uh, six or seven years, I've started uh, teaching in the civilian world here in the states, uh, and I've been I've been lucky enough to be part of the tactical rifleman team for about the last three years, uh, and kind of found my family between uh, between those guys and what we do here with TPC. Um, that's that's kind of the deal, I think. Awesome, awesome. And today uh, we'll talk about biomechanics when you're controlling the rifle, when you're shooting the rifle and you see guys that the principles that we already know from pistol shooting, they absolutely transfer to the rifle shooting skills. Now we have one small tweak here, only one thing. So when you're talking about the principle of maximizing pressure in the rifle world, instead of phrasing it maximizing pressure, here we optimizing pressure. So we'll see that less pressure, still the, the, the gun will wobble. But if you apply too much pressure, it will wobble again. So you need to find that golden rule, how much pressure you need to remember, remember exactly how much pressure will make the rifle to behave very predictable, very inconsistent manner. And guess what? We know that from the pistol shooting. We want that gun to behave absolutely predictable, like a sewing machine. Jump and return to the same position again and again and again. You know that we are teaching a passive management of the recoil. We'll transfer that here in the rifle shooting as well. So essentially what we're talking about, just to put this into a little more context, right? Um, in terms of distance, right? What we're focusing on here is for a rifle, a medium range, right? 50 yards to maybe 100, 150 yards. Uh, so we're talking about a mechanic here. You're gonna teach me a mechanic for those mid ranges, as opposed to what we normally teach in CQB and that kind of deal, where we're talking about closer ranges, 25, 30 meters and in, inside of buildings, across the street, that kind of thing, where you're naturally gonna be more aggressive, you're naturally gonna be more tense physically. Correct, correct. And it's kind of a, a little bit, not controversial, but it's a, it's a different way of, you know, that most uh, military personnel have been taught maximum you know tension because that will happen under stress but uh, tension is the biggest enemy of precision and especially that's super important in that mid-range distances if you need to shoot offhand you, you cannot go with it and you cannot be uh, very accurate if you're based absolutely on tension right so we'll tweak it here and there and we see what kind of results we will achieve together right excellent so uh, today we'll focus on one element and that one element is the uh, biomechanics of the support hand basically in you know, rifle shooting or at least how we teach it it's support hand it's 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 holding the rifle now we have three levels of efficiency of the support the best option is artificial support of the rifle. Why? Because it's Me Meaning natural. resting it on something, on the ground, on a barricade, on Correct. a truck, exactly. on a stand, on a tripod, whatever. Okay. Why we need that? Because it never changes. We want as much consistency as we can. If you don't have that in 
the particular situation, the next option, it's a skeletal support. So it's basically biomechanical artificial support, right? Skeleton. Do not react on stress, tension, and etc. etc. We use skeletal structure as much as we can. Now, the last option, if you don't have anything else available, is the muscular support. The problem with the muscular support is, especially when you get stressed, Tension. You know, tension, a lot of tension. As we said, tension is the worst enemy of precision. Tension causes movement. Correct, exactly. So today we'll focus on that support hand. Now we already have one uh, artificial support of the rifle and that's the stock. We will treat, actually we'll approach the support hand like the second artificial support in order to create a triangle. Same like with the pistol, we have the two arms that forms the isosceles. Now it's a little bit off, but still you want to create as close to that same effect. We use the skeletal support here because we don't have any artificial support available at that point when you're shooting offhand. Uh, but the key point to isolate skeletal structure here is exactly like with the pistol to stiffen the wrist and to stiffen the elbow as well. Now, don't get us wrong. When you're stiffening the elbow, that doesn't mean to lock the elbow. You can bring it back to a very natural extension and just engage the forearm muscles and a little bit of a tricep to achieve that effect. Well, and just like with pistol, oftentimes when we talk about stiffening the wrist with students, yeah. right? When you say stiffen your wrists more, people add more pressure. It's not adding more pressure, it's locking that joint in place. That's all it's doing. Correct. Actually, by engaging a specific muscle groups, you stiffen the tendons and preventing the joint to move, right? It's like a solid piece of steel. We use that analogy all the time, right? So let's build the, the proper shooting stance really quickly and we'll go to some minor details, but the main focus Again, it's the support hand today. So, Emery, go ahead, build your shooting stance like you, you know it, and we do a small tweaks here and there. Now, the key thing is right now to make sure that, again, the chest and the pelvis, it's absolutely square to the target. If the pelvis is not square, if you're right-handed shooter, the rifle uh, muzzle flip will go up and to the right, up and to the right. So, wrap the shoulder around so, nobody can actually see the the back of the stock if you look from the profile from here if you need to square your pelvis just push with the knee forward a little bit shooting side knee and from here the effect of the retraction with the support hand it's exactly like with the pistol pull the support hand shoulder back and a little bit down until you limit the backward motion of the shoulder joint. From here, stiffen the wrist, stiffen the elbow, and apply a little pressure and compress the tissue behind the shoulder of the stock. So what we'll do right now, we'll fine tune things. The first thing that we'll pay attention is how much pressure we apply the rifle basically will tell you what is good enough. That makes sense. So go ahead, we'll go live fire here. Now, for the purpose of the drill, the only thing that we care is how consistent the rifle returns back to the same spot. Just tweaking the pressure a little bit. Right? Let's go ahead, let's do it. Good. So it's returning consistent each and every time? Surprisingly awesome. so. Awesome. Now we'll That little tweak, it, it makes quite a bit of a difference in terms of how the rifle recoils and returns back to zero. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so we'll find the proper pressure, right? We already covered that we need to stiffen the elbow and the wrist. Now we'll pay attention at the moment that you find the proper pressure, pushing with the support hand back, at the moment that you find that pressure, support hand is supposed to stay very neutral, like you're holding a cup of coffee 
in space, you're not pulling, you're not reacting on the shot, you're just holding that hand neutral in space, right? The shooting hand will wrap naturally around the pistol grip. It's, it's absolutely passive. It will only manipulate the trigger with it in proper way. Only finger moves. Yeah. Same like with the pistol, right? Let's go ahead and let's try several more shots like that. Now pay attention about that very neutral position of the support hand. Only finger moves. Let the rifle jump. And we can speed it up. Excellent. So what do you see? Like what the red dot is telling you? So right now what was happening is every shot, now that I'm really just focusing on that support side hand kind of resting in place once it's found that, to me, it feels like an intermediate pressure. Mm -hmm. Yes, Based on it what is. I'm used to, I'm used to pulling back very tight with both hands for CQB applications and counter-terrorist applications. Here, I'm kind of relaxing a little more. I'm still pulling back. Wrist and elbows are stiffened. My, uh, as we were talking about, my elbow's a little higher Right? It's up a little bit than mm -hmm. um, compared to what I'm used to. And what I'm seeing in terms of the dot is it's rising pretty much straight up and it's maybe going up or shooting at a target that's, you know, that's not a full torso. You know, it's a small target here and, and the dots may be rising up to the top of the head of the target. All right. So you can play a little bit with how much you can roll the elbow up or down. And again, the red dot will tell you at the moment that you, you know, the red dot start behaving very predictably and exactly the same way each and every time, that's the exact position of the elbow. So it's very individual and based to our physical structure. In terms of finding the roll angle of your support hand. Of course, yeah. For me personally, I like about 45 degrees-ish and I feel the best like this, but again, it's very individual. So play with it guys and find the, the optimum position of your support hand elbow there, right? Now let's do it one more time. Try simply to accelerate the rate of fire. You're not doing nothing else. You know, you're not proactively trying to uh, control the gun. The only thing that will accelerate right now is just the trigger finger manipulation. They're absolutely passive. Now, if you want to lower a little bit the, the actual muzzle flip, simply by shifting your center of gravity a little bit more forward, but stay absolutely passive. Don't try to time the shot. You just lean in, lock it, forget about it. Just let the gun to naturally recoil on the body. Square, very important to be square. <clears throat> Awesome, awesome. And if you're shooting at 50 yards and the target, it's a reduced silhouette target. So how you feel? That felt good. I missed one shot, but it, but it felt good mainly because I'm really trying to focus on releasing tension from the places that don't need to have tension. And so I, you know, what that's gonna cause is it's gonna allow me to uh, apparently shoot that much faster, but also shoot longer. Yeah, and it's at the beginning, it can uh, feel a little bit awkward and strange, but it will feel quite effortless, you know. It's definitely not what I'm used to. Yes. Um, I, I would think, I would say that the part that seems more unnatural to me now, it's not the relaxing part, it's moving my shooting side shoulder forward as opposed to normally what I'm used to is raising the shoulders up. And we do that at the closer distances because when you're freaked out, when you're in combat, right? That's, that's what the body does. You're just gonna tense up, which is good for those distances where this kind of accuracy is not what we need, right? I mean, hitting a tee box shot at seven or 10 meters with a rifle, no big deal. I can be pretty tense physically. And still can and be quite still accurate, nail that tee right? box over right. and over. But uh, you know, at this distance, you know, it's 50 yards, very small target. It's, uh, it, it, this, this really is helpful. I need to get used to that shoulder motion. We're doing that in a 
longer distance and reduce size target uh, using that like a micro diagnostics. You know, uh, even if you add some um, inconsistency in the performance, that small target will immediately tell you if there's something wrong with it. So always we are very focused on the small details for micro diagnostics so you can see if there ever a cure. So that's the purpose of it. Now you can be really, really fast and efficient with, with that stance for really close distances. But again, it's up to repetition and ingrain all that habits, all that skills basically in your subconscious mind. You don't need to think about them when you perform. That was 100 yards using the same technique. All right, guys, what we're just shooting, we're shooting a reduced COI target produced from shooting target solutions. And we did that fun stuff together with Emory in uh, Utah, sunny St. George on a Cobalt Kinetics, the company that produces that beautiful girl there and that's their facility here in St. George which is awesome. What do you think about the rifle Imre? I know that you have also one of their uh, shorties. Two? I have two of the rifles. One, two. You know Actually, why? My, my you main... know why? Because more is more. More is more. Yeah I've, I've been uh, my main work guns right now are two Cobalt Kinetics guns. This one is Rawson's. He's letting me shoot it because I flew out here without guns. It's TPC branded gun. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these are fantastic rifles. This one's a 12 inch. I have an 11 and a half inch that I mainly use. Phenomenal smooth shooting, flat shooting. Uh, it's gorgeous pieces of art. Yeah. So not to speak of the fact that their range here, uh, this place is phenomenal. We're here in a 360 degree range and there's cars here and we can do all the jackassery that, uh, that we like doing. All right, guys, if you, uh like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell because that helps the channel to go on you the next time